In this episode, we are going to talk about flows. Flows are one of the key components of your assistant and it's the first thing that you should define as you start the development process. Flows define the business logic of your assistant, a specific set of logical steps that your assistant should follow in certain situations in order to efficiently fulfill user requests. Without business logic or flows, LLM-based assistants are prone to hallucinations, a tendency to invent new facts and information in a state of uncertainty. Hallucinations, as we discussed at one of the previous episodes, are really difficult to control in a production environment. And especially in an enterprise setting, hallucinations can be extremely costly and dangerous. And in general, they prevent the assistant from efficiently fulfilling user requests. It is very important to understand that flows aren't intended to represent the entire conversation between the user and an assistant. Instead, they are used in specific situations where it is important for your assistant to follow a specific set of logical steps. In some cases, that might be asking for clarifications, collecting some additional details using APIs or connecting to databases, uh, defining some additional logic on the retrieved information, and so on. The true beauty of Calm, which combines business logic implemented as flows and uh, LLM-based dialogue understanding, is that you can very efficiently build assistance because you really don't have to generate any training data for your assistant. All you need is define the business logic, flows, combine it with LLM-based dialogue understanding components, and then really focus on building out your assistant and running it in production. A very simple example of that is banking assistant, for example. Let's say the user would like to open a new bank account. So the first thing that your assistant should do is check if the user meets a specific age criteria. For example, if they are 18 or older. This is important because in specific countries, there are specific laws and legislations for how old the person can be to be able to open a bank account on their own. You will be defining flows in YAML files. Let's take flows.yaml file as an example. And let's have a look at the key components of a flow. A flow consists of the following components. An ID, a unique identifier of a flow, name. This is optional, human readable name of the flow. It is recommended to give flows a short and descriptive name so that your teammates who are also working on your assistant can easily understand what the flow is for. Description is a simple description of what the flow is doing. If, optional condition for whether or not a specific flow should be started, this is called a flow guard. Steps, required flow steps. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the implementation of flows. To better understand each component of flows, let's use an actual example. Here we have an example of flows.yaml file built for a financial services assistant. This file consists of three flows. Say hello, a simple flow designed to respond to the user's greeting and steer the conversation towards collecting the user's personal details. Collect personal details, a flow designed to collect user details like their first name, last name, age, and initiate the process of checking if the user is under a legal age limit. Age limit, a flow designed to check if the user is 18 or above. If they are, the conversation should continue. If they aren't, the conversation should end. The first property that all of these flows have is a description. It is a very important property used by the dialogue understanding component to predict when a specific flow should be started. We will dive into the dialogue understanding in one of the following episodes. The key thing to keep in mind about the flow descriptions is that they have to accurately describe what the flow is about as they can directly influence how your assistant performs. Next, you will see the steps component. There are quite a few different types of steps you can define in the flows. Action step. It can be custom action or utterance to be run by the flow. Action steps execute the prediction action immediately without waiting for the user's input. The first flow, say hello, is a good example of the implementation of simple action step. Here, the action utter greet 
is an action step that will be executed immediately once the flow is triggered. Collect step. A question to ask the user in order to fill a specific slot. The assistant will not proceed until the specified slot is filled. Collect personal details flow has three collect steps. Collecting user's first name, last name, and their age. By default, if any of these slots are filled before the flow is triggered, the steps for collecting these slots will be skipped. However, this behavior can be configured by adding ask before filling true flag to a specific slot. In that case, the question to fill the slot will always be asked. Another thing to keep in mind about the slots collected during the collect step. By default, the slots are automatically reset when the flow is complete. If you would like to retain the slot values after the flow is complete, you can achieve that by adding the flag reset after flow ends and set it to false. You can also add slot validation using if else statements, just like it's shown in the flow age limit. Here we are checking if the user is 18 or above. When validation fails, your assistant will automatically try to collect the information again. The assistant will repeatedly ask for the slot until the value is not rejected. Link step. A step to link to another flow. You will notice the step in all three of the example flows. Link step starts another flow that should be initiated at the end of the current one. For example, once the required slots are completed, the assistant will start the age limit flow to validate the user's age. Link step allows you to break down the steps into smaller pieces and use them as building blocks when designing more complicated flows. Set slot step. Usually, a collect step is used for setting slots. However, in some situations, you can also use set slot step to set one or more slots. It's mostly used in situations where you have to reset the slot. For example, if the user asks to send more money than they have in their account, your assistant can give the appropriate response to the situation and reset the slot amount of money instead of completely ending the flow. Branching is a very powerful feature of flows that enables you to define more advanced flows and different turns depending on specific conditions. We have a small example of branching in age limit flow where we check if the user is 18 years old or not. This example demonstrates on how we can access a specific slot value to validate user's age. To access the current dialog frame properties, you can use the property context. There is a long list of different operators supported by Calm for writing conditions. Check out the documentation for a full and up-to-date list. Okay, so let's say you're building your assistant and you define the most important flows that your assistant should follow. Now it's important to enable your assistant to start the flows. There are two components that can be used for that. We will dive into how they work in more detail in the upcoming episodes of this series, and here you will have just a high-level overview of them. So there are two components that your assistant can use to start the flows. LLM command generator uses descriptions of the flows, the context of the running conversation, and other context to decide when to start a specific flow. For that reason, it is very important to use concise and descriptive descriptions. Or you can use NLU command adapter component, which uses a predicted intent to start the flow. With NLU command adapter, you can define a specific intent or a set of intents that should trigger a flow or a prediction threshold that if met would start a flow. This component is optional and is not required to build with Calm. The main difference between these two components is that LLM command generator relies on large language models to make predictions and doesn't require any additional training data. NLU command adapter, on the other hand, uses more traditional NLU-based approaches that need to be trained and require a trigger intent to start a specific flow. With NLU command adapter, a specific flow will be started when a specific intent is predicted with a certain confidence. In some situations, you may need to add some additional checks before starting a specific flow. For example, you may add a condition for a specific slot before starting a flow, like the following. Here, before starting the flow, we are checking if the user is authenticated and if their email is verified. 
Now that you are more familiar with the inner workings of flows and how you can implement them, let's go to the next episode and talk about how you can implement the dialogue understanding component for your assistant. Thank you.